Hey everyone, this is Joe with AmazingGameRoom.com, and today I have a presentation for you on how to pick the best air hockey table. I don't want to say that there is a best air hockey table, which is why I made this, because I want to help you pick the best one for you, your business, your game room. Whatever it is, there's a best one for everyone. So here's a quick about me. I love playing air hockey. I'm nowhere near a professional player. This over here is actually me playing. I look a bit nerdy, I know. Um, well, I am a bit nerdy. So <laughs> I actually do sell uh, premium air hockey tables as an authorized dealer, as a little side hobby slash business. And I've spent hours and hours and hours researching the subject, looking at all the air hockey tables available. And I genuinely want to help you pick the best one for for you. So let's get started. What you're going to learn here is, first of all, what makes a good air hockey table in the first place. I've divided that up into three different categories of air hockey tables and then made a few sub-distinctions as to the what makes the product stand out in those categories and what, what those features are, essentially. So if you'd rather view this guide in text format or want to see a, a few additional details, you can go to AmazingGameRoom.com slash tables. That's a guide that's the text version of this guide that I wrote, and uh, you'll see a few more things in there. It's worth checking out at any point in this video or at the end. So what makes a good air hockey table in the first place? Firstly, the, the size of the table. Now, professional competition tables are going to be 99 by 55 length and width. These are the tables that are sanctioned by the USAA and the Air Hockey Players Association for competitive play. Now, there are a couple, three brands that make these tables that size, which we'll, we'll get into in the next slide, but they also do make smaller tables that have the same, I'm going to say, quality. And what, what separates good and bad quality air hockey tables are things that are Kind of hard to quantify, but it comes down to rail design and blower quality. If you ever played air hockey tables, or sorry, if you ever played air hockey, then you know that you need to bounce the puck off the rails to score in your in your opponent's goal. If they're any good, they're going to be defending, and it's not always possible to just shoot it straight into their goal. You need to set something up. So the best tables have rails that are designed that just give you that that accurate bounce the and the, the speed that you're looking for off the rails. Uh, and on the same, it goes hand in hand with the blower quality because the best tables have really powerful blowers which support the use of heavy pucks, heavy Lexan pucks. And with if you don't use a heavy puck, you're going to notice that things are going to be flying off the table, um... And the physics of the game are going to be a bit off and different to what you experience in the arcade. That being said, as you get into the lower price ranges, or even the medium price ranges, you're not going to find tables that come with these pucks. So it's not to say that you're going to be playing terrible air hockey, or it's not going to be fun as you get into the cheaper tables. But I'm just saying that if you want to play it at its highest, highest level, um, we're going to need to talk about professional style tables, which is table category one. Again, you don't necessarily need these, but I just wanted to, these are the best ones on the market. So I figured I'd talk about these first. So there are three companies, as I mentioned, that make these professional grade tables, Valley Dynamo, Gold Standard Games, and Brunswick Billiards, who actually, Brunswick was the company that started Air Hockey Table, I believe, in the 60s and 70s. And so these are the only brands that have tables that are sanctioned for professional play, as I already mentioned. And they have home models and coin-operated models for commercial use. So if you own a business, you may want to contact the companies directly because um, it's going to be hard to you know, find it online and to where, to, where to buy a, a coin-operated machine. And they... So Valley Dynamo in particular makes smaller versions of professional tables. So it's got the same quality of rails and blowers and things like that uh, with, a, with a smaller footprint. 
So you could still play with the heavy pucks. They actually make some smaller heavy pucks for the smaller tables. And so if you're looking to get one of these, these are really a long-term investment. They're going to start around $2,000 and can go in high, go as high as $6,500. So that's a bit of a wide price range. Let's look at what separates all, all that. The size, as I mentioned, is going to be one thing, but a few of the other things that separate these tables are the overhead, lighting, and scoring. So this is from Gold Standard Games. This is a uh, their overhead lighting unit, and I believe this one actually has a black lighting function. So if you turn on the black light and play in the dark, you can play kind of like a uh, galactic laser type mode, which is, which is fun. Growing up in the 90s, I really appreciate stuff like that. And then as you, the cheaper models are not going to have the black lighting. They might not even, they're not even going to have the overhead lighting. You can even find cheap ones from Gold Standard Games in particular that have uh, no electronic scoring just because they really wanted to give a quality air hockey table on a budget without the bells and whistles. Again, that's uh, in the article that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we get into a bit more detail with that at amazinggameroom.com slash tables. And uh, so rounded goal ends are something else that you'll find. You'll find when you're playing uh, long rounds of air hockey tables, or of air hockey, it can be a bit more comfortable to lean against something rounded rather than something sharp. So again, you know, once you look at the tables from those three brands, you'll start to pick and choose and, and see what you want. And you may want to sacrifice some things to save money, or you may want to get all the bells and whistles if you have the, uh, the budget for it. So table category two is casually competitive. Now, these tables are smaller than the professional tables, and they're around 80, 80 inches in length. Some of them go up to 85. Some might go up to 90, but overall, they are weaker in those key, those key features that I mentioned. Again, it's hard, hard to quantify, but you're not going to have that same arcade experience where you can bank off the rails, set up shots perfectly. You'll be able to play good air hockey, and it's... The, these kind of tables are great for a house, you know, a family game room or something like that. Adults in, in, can enjoy playing on them too. There's not, nothing necessarily wrong with these tables, but again, you're not going to be playing at the highest, highest level. And they range from around 700 to 1200. Again, if you're not super serious about air hockey and just want something fun to do with your kids and your friends, these are great. These are what I would go for. Now the thing that separates out these tables are, so some of them, like the one I was showing on the last slide, was the uh, Fat Cat Pocky. And Pocky, because it's a multi-game table, that they made the word Pocky because hockey, ping pong, pool, uh, it's got all those games. So you'll see multi-game capabilities with some of these casually competitive tables. You'll see some, some have different storage options for storing all the different games that are on it. Um, there's going to be different, different bells and whistles. Like this EA sports table has lighting, sound effects, things like that are going to be the differentiating factors between them. So it just comes down to what you want to spend. I personally, if I wasn't going to get a competitive table, I would probably go with one of the, the multi-game ones, just because, hey, if you get bored of air hockey, I'm not really sure I like it. You can still play some ping pong and billiards. And uh, those two games, the size of the table, in my opinion, isn't as critical as air hockey. Still, still very important, but you could still play a good game of pool on, the on a table if it's a bit smaller. No problem. I don't even know. I don't think there is technically a regulation pool size because there's just different, so many different versions of the game, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. And so table category three is strictly for kids. Uh, these tables, they're pretty small. They 
go around 48 inches in length, but they can get even smaller for some of the really tiny tabletop versions, which they don't even have legs. You just place them on a table. Some are battery operated. Some you plug in. Some don't even have air. <laughs> but they're fun to play with your kids. I wouldn't get these for an adult game room. I would get these if you, for a Christmas gift or a birthday gift. Just know that these aren't built to last forever. And even if, even if they do last forever, your kids will probably get bored of it. But regardless, because they're the least expensive, they tend to be the most popular tables. And what you're going to find differentiating uh, features with these are you're going to have some electronic scoring features. Some are going to have foldable legs. Like I said, some of them gonna, are going to go on the table. There are some with lighting. So there's really, again, if you're going to go with one of these, I would stick around the cheaper end because, and then, and then if you get it for a kid and he or she really likes air hockey, then hey, I would consider investing in one of the professional ones just because I wouldn't want to make a big financial commitment with, with one of these tables. You never know what's what's going to happen with them. The, the, the companies that make them, um, not to say that they're bad, but a lot of the times that they're not fully dedicated to air hockey like like Valley Dynamo or Gold Standard Games or Brunswick isn't fully dedicated to air hockey, but you get the idea. You get the idea. These are more mass market games that I wouldn't want to invest too much in. So what's the next step? As I mentioned... I actually made a comprehensive article. It's got a list of a bunch of tables that I recommend. You can go find that at amazinggameroom.com slash tables. I think you'll find it really helpful. There's a bunch of sizing charts in there, and then you can go ahead and decide what I think, what you think is going to be the best for you based on what you've learned in this presentation. If, if you found it helpful, I tried to make it a little bit different than a lot of those top 10 lists that you see because I feel like you really don't get any valuable information out of those. So if you found this helpful, um, just give it a like. So consider subscribing to Amazing Game Room. We're going to be putting out more stuff like this on air hockey and all sorts of other table games. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.